Okay, topic of the day is uh, quantum physics. So it is all about the light. Light is major source of energy. And the light has dual nature. Number one, wave nature. And number two, particle nature. So here on the earth, it is available in both natures, wave nature and particle nature. Now in wave nature, it's energy totally dependent on its frequency. But in the particle nature, it's energy depends on the mass and speed. So this energy in the wave nature is equal to H constant into F where H is called the Planck constant and it is energy per unit frequency. I mean this Planck constant is the energy carried by a wave per unit hertz frequency. So a wave which has frequency one hertz, how much energy is carried by it? That is the Planck constant. So energy of the light in terms of, in the form of the wave, is represented by E is equal to HF. Now, similarly, when the light is in the particle nature, then its energy is MC square, famous Einstein equation, E is equal to MC square, where the M is the mass of the particle and C is the speed of light. So when the light is particle, its particle is called photon. And it is defined as, it is particle of light packet or quanta of energy and electromagnetic in nature mean when this light is generated at the source it was wave and the later it is converted into particle nature so the photon is the particle of light it's a packet of energy and electromagnetic in nature now according to Law of conservation of energy. So the light in wave nature. And then the light is converted into the particle nature and then particle to the wave. Energy in wave nature exactly equal to the energy in particle nature according to law of conservation of energy. Now, energy in the wave nature is equal to HF. And in the particle nature, it's MC square. And according to the wave theory, V is equal to F lambda. So for light, we can write C is equal to F lambda. So the frequency of the light can be represented as speed divided by lambda. So here, H C over lambda is equal to M C square. One C cancel both sides. So H 
over lambda is equal to m times c. Now this right side is the product of mass and velocity. So C here is considered velocity because when the light travels from the sun to the earth to other planets, there's no change in its direction, no change, significantly no change in the direction. So it's remained same because there's a vacuum. So instead of the speed, we can call it velocity. So the product of the mass and the velocity is called momentum. So the light has momentum and the momentum is related only with the particle nature. So m times velocity h over lambda mean the momentum of the light is equal to h over lambda. So p is the momentum for the particle behavior and lambda is the wavelength for the wave behavior. So this is the call, the equ equation which is relating the particle and the wave nature, mean proving the particle and the wave nature of light, mean the dual nature, and this is called de Broglie equation. So this equation is proving that the light has particle nature as well as wave nature. And this is a relation between two natures. And this wavelength lambda, this h over lambda, this lambda is a special wavelength. This is called de Broglie wavelength. Now, what's the difference between the normal wavelength and de Broglie wavelength? So it is the wavelength of the particle which is converted into the wave, or it's a wavelength of the wave, which can be converted into the particle. So this is called de Broglie equation. And this is also the bridge equation between the particle nature and the wave nature. Now, the light is transferring energy according to the definition rate of transfer of energy per unit area is called light intensity. So rate of transfer of energy per unit area is called intensity and the rate of transfer of energy is power. So we can write intensity of the light is equal to power divided by area. It is measured in watts per meter squared. So it's a derived physical quantity, intensity of the light. And this is its SI unit. Now intensity is equal to power, mean energy divided by time, divided by area. Now, the light have wave nature, so its energy can be written as HF over TA. In terms of the particle, energy of the single particle is MC square, but it can be written as HF according to the law of conservation of energy, because energy in wave nature, energy in particle nature, same. If we consider this the energy of the one particle, then the total energy of the light is the number of the particles, mean number of the photons, time HF. So for the total intensity, we can write NHF over T into A. So N is the number of the photons of the light, H is the Planck constant, F is the frequency of the light, A is the area, T is the time, and I is the intensity, okay? Now suppose we have two lights, 
number one, number two, this is x, this is y, both are having the same frequency, I mean both are of the same color, red, they have same frequency, they have same area. Now the intensity of this x is greater than the intensity of this, I mean this x is brighter than y light. Then according to this equation, I is equal to NHF over TA, F constant for both, this H constant for both, area constant. So we can write I is equal to N divided by T times the whole constant. And this constant is carrying H, F, and A. So we can write I directly proportional to N divided by T mean the rate of emission of photon from the light source. is directly proportional to the intensity of light. Mean the light with more intensity will emit more number of the photons. And the light with less intensity will emit less number of the photons per unit time. So intensity in this case directly proportional to N divided by T. So the ratio of emission of photon in the particles of light depends on intensity. Bright light will emit more number of the photon in the same interval of time as compared to the low intensity light. But if the situation is we have two lights, same area, but this is red and this is green. This is A and this is B. Both have same brightness, same intensity I, same intensity, but the frequency different. This red has less frequency. The green has more frequency. Now in this situation, when the formula is used, I is equal to NHF over TA. Look, area is constant, intensity is constant, the Planck constant, so we can move all constants one side. Intensity multiplied by area divided by H is N divided by T times frequency. So this whole is constant. So the constant is equal to N divided by T times frequency. When the product of two quantity is constant, then definitely they are inversely proportional to each other. When the intensity is kept constant, then the rate of emission a photon from any source is inversely proportional to the frequency of light. Mean the higher frequency light will give you the small number of the emission. Larger the frequency, smaller the rate of the emission, smaller the frequency, larger the rate of emission of light. So both are inversely because high frequency mean high energy. When high energy photons are emitted from the source of the light, then it will be smaller in number, but from the same intensity light, when smaller number of the photons are emitted, 
they will be larger in number. For example, we have this quantity, dough. If small lamps are made from this dough, and the large lumps are made from this low dough, then definitely they will be less in number and they will be more in number because the quantity of the dough, intensity of the dough in both cases is same. When you will make small lumps, they will be large in the number. And we, when we will make the large, num, large size of the lump, they will be small in the number the same here, when the same intensity lies will give you the high energy photon, they will be less in number and vice versa. So in one side, N divided by T is directly proportional to intensity, but when the frequency is constant. And the other side, N divided by T is inversely proportional to frequency when we will keep the intensity constant. Okay, now the photon is the carrying energy. It is electromagnetic in nature. Then we have to draw photon like electromagnetic wave. So this is the symbol for the photon. This is a single photon and its carrying energy E is equal to HF. Now, this photon is suppose is incident at the surface of the metal. When it hit the surface electron, Energy is absorbed by the electron. This energy E is equal to HF is absorbed by the surface electron. Now the electron is attracted by the nucleus towards the center of the atom. So the minimum energy required by any electron to be ejected from the metal surface is called work function energy, which is also called the ionization energy. And it is represented by the symbol phi. And usually in the question, it says written in electron volts or mega electron volts. So remember, one electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 joule, and one mega electron volt is 1.6 into 10 power minus 13 joule. Now suppose the photon is coming with energy E is equal to HF, and it is targeted with the electron at the surface of the work function phi, then we have to compare the incident energy and the required energy, the work function energy. If the energy of the incident photon HF is smaller than the work function energy, then no electron is ejected. from the metal surface. No emission of the electron because the energy is not sufficient. But the electron will absorb energy. And travel 
within the metal from one point to other which causes the EMF and electric current and this is used in solar panels but if the energy of the incident photon HF greater than or equal to the work function energy then electron is emitted from the metal surface so number one if the energy of the photon hf is exactly equal to the phi then electron is ejected electron is emitted from the metal from the metal surface but it has no further energy to travel further so it will be exactly at the surface of the metal but not the part not the part of the metal because it is ejected from the metal it will remain at the surface but not the part of the metal so in this case the energy of the incident photon is equal to phi divided by h and this is called threshold frequency so if the energy of the incident photon is exactly equal to the work function energy of the electron then the frequency of the incident photon is called threshold frequency so this f naught threshold frequency is the minimum frequency of an incident photon to eject electron from the metal surface. So the minimum frequency of the incident photon to eject electron from the metal surface is called threshold frequency and its formula is work function energy divided by Planck constant. Number two, if the energy of the incident photon is greater than work function then this incident energy of the photon is the work function plus remaining becomes the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons so hf is equal to phi plus ke this is the work function energy of the electron. This is the kinetic energy of the electron. And this is the energy of the incident photon. So this left side photon, but the right side electron. Work function energy and kinetic energy. So we can write kinetic energy of the ejected electron is equal to HF minus phi. Now, if uh, we are using the same metal, so all surface electrons will have the same work function. This Planck constant is constant. So there are two variables. So kinetic energy of the electron and the frequency of the photon. So we can write kinetic energy of the ejected electrons depends on frequency of incident photon so kinetic energy of the eject electron depends on the frequency of the incident photon when graph is plotted between these two variables frequency of the incident photon at the x-axis in hertz kinetic energy of the ejected electron in joule or in electron volt 
then the gradient is Planck constant and the y-intercept is negative, which is minus. And then we will draw a straight line with negative y-intercept. So this is minus phi. And this is the frequency, right? Which is the minimum frequency required to eject electron without kinetic energy. So this X intercept is the work function, sorry, is the threshold frequency. Now, this is the full line, it's a solid line, this is a dotted line. Reason, if the frequency is smaller than the work function energy, then there will be no emission of the electron. That's why this line is just a trend. There is no emission. And the gradient of this line, according to the equation, will give you the Planck constant. So look, this is a straight line equation. Kinetic energy at the y-axis, frequency at the x-axis, h is the Planck constant, and minus phi is this. And this x-intercept is the threshold frequency So this F dot is the threshold frequency. If the frequency is smaller than this threshold frequency, then there is no emission of the electron. So this line is dotted line. This is just a trend. Okay. Now this electron is ejected from the metal surface. Suppose this is the metal. Electron is ejected and we have to stop it. So definitely we have to decelerate it. We have to do some work and the work must be electric work. And the electric work is charge multiplied by voltage. So how much work is required? Exactly equal to the kinetic energy carried by the electron. And the charge of the electron is E elementary charge and this V is the stopping potential we have to stop it so when this equation kinetic energy is equal to HF minus phi this energy is replaced with V stopping potential times E is equal to HF minus phi then the stopping potential is equal to H over EF minus phi divided by E. Greater the kinetic energy, greater amount of the work, so that this E is constant. So large potential is required to stop the electron. So the stopping potential depends on the frequency. Large frequency, large kinetic energy. So the large stopping potential is required. So when stopping potential required by the ejected electron is plotted against the frequency of the incident photon, almost same line. This is showing the same trend straight line but x intercept and the y intercept will be different sorry the gradient will be different x intercept will remain same this threshold frequency y intercept will be different minus 5 over e and the gradient will be now equal to h divided by e so h is the Planck constant e is the charge of electron this is equal to gradient this h over e and this y-intercept is minus phi over e and this is the work function okay now if we use other metal of the higher work function larger work function than the graph for kinetic energy and frequency will be different but parallel to the previous one on the right side so it has higher threshold frequency because the large amount of the energy required by the photon 
to eject the electron from the higher work function metal. Gradient will be different because both gradient are equal to the Planck constant and similarly for the higher work function metal, the graph will be same parallel to the previous one with large this threshold frequency. But the gradient will remain same H divided by E and the value of this work function divided by E will be more negative. So this is the graph when the work function of the metal is high and it's the graph when the work function of the metal is low. So the first graph, this is for the kinetic energy against frequency and this is against the stopping potential required by the electron and the frequency. Now look, electron is ejected with kinetic energy suppose half mv square and the electric energy is equal to charge multiplied by voltage 1 by 2 mv square so we have to stop it so how much work is required exactly equal to the kinetic energy and according to de Broglie equation Mass into velocity is equal to H divided by lambda. So the speed is equal to H divided by lambda times M. Now we replace this V over here. So charge into voltage is equal to 1 by 2 m v square mean h square over m square lambda square. Now 1 m is cancelled. So we can write lambda square is equal to h square over 2 m e into v. And the lambda is equal to under root of this whole, so h square over 2 mev under root. And the finally, lambda is equal to h divided by under root 2 mev. Look, electron is ejected with some kinetic energy. If it is not stopped, and its energy is too high, kinetic energy, there's a possibility that its speed approaches the speed of the light. When the particle approaches the speed of light, it is converted into the wave nature. So sometimes when the kinetic energy of the eject electron is too high, it will be converted from particle nature to the wave nature and this is the derivation for the wavelength of the electron when it is converted from particle to wave nature after the emission from the metal surface. If the kinetic energy of the electron is too large, its speed approaches the speed of light, then it is converted into the wavelength, and this is the formula to calculate the wavelength of the electron when it is converted from particle. And usually it is similar to the diameter of its atom. Mean either in the range of 10 power nine meter or 10 power minus 10 meter. So this is the estimated value of the wavelength of the electron which is ejected from the metal surface with light and the process through which we are emitting light is called the photoelectric effect so now the emission of electron with the help of the light from the metal surface is called photoelectric effect. So what is the condition? The energy of the photon either greater or less, or greater or equal to, 
the work function energy. So this is actually the condition for the photoelectric effect. So the photoelectric effect is the emission of the electron from the metal surface with the help of the light. It's similar to thermionic emission, emission of the electron from the metal with the help of the heat, that is thermionic emission. But if the light is incident on the metal and electrons are ejected, then this is called the photoelectric effect. So the first condition, HF is equal to phi, then no kinetic energy carried by the ejected electron. When HF is greater than phi, yes, kinetic energy is carried by, but sometime this kinetic energy is too large. Speed of the ejected electron is too large. When it approaches to the speed of the light, then it is converted into the wave nature. It has de Broglie wavelength, and this is the formula for the de Broglie wavelength of any particle which is converted into the wave nature. So M is the mass of the particle. So here E is the charge of the electron and V is the stopping potential and H the Planck constant. Now, light has dual nature. Number one, very important, the particle nature. Look, some frequency means some value of the frequency, minimum value of the frequency is required to eject electrons from metal surface. and which is called the F naught, the threshold frequency. If the frequency is smaller than threshold frequency, it's not ejected, I mean there's a limitation. So a minimum frequency is required to eject the electron from the metal surface, which is called the threshold frequency. And the next, rate of emission of electron depends on intensity of light, intensity of photon. We have proved that N divided by T is directly proportional to I. The rate of emission mean the current produced after emission depends on the intensity of the light. And number three, kinetic energy of ejected electron depends on frequency of incident photon, incident light. We have done the kinetic energy is equal to HF minus phi. This is constant. This is constant. So it depends on the F. And the number four Next, there is no delay. There is no delay between absorption of photon by the metal and emission of electron from the metal. So look, these are the four points. Number one, some minimum frequency is required to eject electron, which is called the threshold frequency. Rate of emission of the electron depends on the intensity of the light. Kinetic energy of the ejected electron depends on the frequency of the incident photon. And there is no delay between the absorption of photon and emission of the electron from the metal. And these four points are called evidences for the particulate nature of light. Particulate nature of light. These are the four points.